There are four laws that make for encounter with the Father. The first is the law of bodies. When the Spirit wants to encounter you, there are many dynamics of the Spirit that is activated. Spirits will always woo you to where they are. So most times, when the Spirit wants to encounter you, He will first of all initiate either a body or a summon in your spirit man. You may be doing and living your life comfortably until one day you lose your peace. And you are finding out what is the matter. And there is no cognitive word to interact, to interpret it. A spirit is beginning to summon you. When a generation does not understand the language of bodies, there will be scarcity of encounters. Many are hoping that the Lord will walk into their bedroom and encounter them. But most times, God is summoning you from Egypt to Horeb. But the bodies it brings to your spirit, you trivialize them. You wake up in the morning, it looks like you want to, you want to eat. And then when you went to touch the food, the food becomes like a sin. You want to eat it, it looks like a sin. There is an encounter at the corridor. So the Holy Ghost is trying to get you to turn to him. If you fail to pay attention to that body, you will abort an encounter. Moses was in Egypt doing very well. He was one of the candidates that will become princes or kings to inherit Pharaoh, to succeed Pharaoh. But the day came, all of a sudden, Moses was troubled. Why are the Israelites being malhandled? I am also an Israelite. He thought it was a body. He stepped out and he wanted to kill every Egyptian. It was not about killing an Egyptian. The encounter of his destiny was coming to him in form of a body. And Moses will not interpre interpret it correctly. How many Egyptians will you kill? It was not about the Egyptians. It was about the calling that was upon his life. So when God wanted to turn his attention and draw him from Egypt, he put a body in his heart. In that dissatisfaction, he was supposed to seek God. There are times when you sit down, you become dissatisfied with the state of your family. How come people are struggling to get married while we are beautiful? It's not about marriage. An encounter is inviting you. Many times you sit down, why are deaths in this family? It's not about the death. An encounter is inviting you. Many times you are troubled. Why is nobody succeeding? Are we not supposed to? Are we not good enough? An encounter is inviting you. When a body begins to come to your spirit, shut down. That's a man who understands the law of body and begin to entreat the Lord. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? Not long enough as you service that body, you will begin to hear sounds. So many other elements that travel to your space with that body will begin to lend themselves to you. And you stood up before. The body was about death. The body was about lack of success. And you started praying. You started praying. After a while, that same body now begins to talk to you in intangible but very cognitive terms add fasting to this prayer and then you added fasting you don't know what you are doing you have fasted for 20 days you don't even know why you are fasting but the body will not go and as you are servicing that body in prayer and in fasting when you read the 30th day you say add worship and then you add worship you didn't know what you were doing at the end of the day you are climbing Horeb it's a 40 days journey you are climbing you are not aware if you continue for a while, you will discover that you will hit a zenith in the spirit. And one day, the same prayers you have been praying, the same fasting you have been fasting, while you are yet fasting, you will encounter the Father and He will begin to speak to you. And that day, the Father will let you know the death was an excuse to bring you to the mountain of encounter. Daniel said, I understood by books that the years of captivity of Israel was supposed to be 70. And then he began to entreat the Lord for 21 days. He thought he was praying for Israel's deliverance. When he prayed for 21 days, an angel showed up. He said, I was giving speed to fly fast, to meet you and to give you skill and understanding. So the prayer activated an encounter with the cherubim. But Daniel thought it was a body. Most of the encounters that would have changed your life, they came to you in form of bodies, but you were not aware, so you aborted them. You woke up in the morning, you felt like fasting, you say, oh boy, this is no easy, maybe tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow may not be the Kairos moment. Tomorrow may not be the Kairos moment. Tomorrow, tomorrow, no. 
it's not everybody that will encounter God in a conference. It's not everybody that will encounter God by laying on of hands. We have different ways of responding to God. And God knows the way he fabricated you in the studio of eternity. So many times, he knows the language that will reach you fast is the language of body. Because you are a man that pay attention to details. And he brought body, but you aborted it. How many bodies have we aborted that have denied us life-changing encounters? Many things waiting in the spirit, but we can't travel there. We can't travel there. When Moses left Egypt for 40 years, he kept that body in his heart. He kept it until one day the Bible said he went to the backside of the desert. And as he was there, he saw a bush burning that was not consumed. The first thing God began to do was to talk to him about Israel. Because God knew that was the body of his heart. How many bodies will our generation have bought? The devil knows this intelligence. That's why when you look around you, everywhere is littered with distractions. Those are bodies and butters. You had a body and all of a sudden you step into the parlor and they are watching a seasonal movie. And then you sit down and say, After a while, you say, Wait, you now sit. After a while, you now bring your pillow and lie down. You didn't know that that was a clinical abortion taking place. When you finish watching that seasonal movie, you will stand up and the body you carry it from the bedroom. You can't find it anymore. You will go back to your religious prayer. Shabba, 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 shabba. You will do shabba, shabba, shabba for another three years because you lost the Kairos moment. Many don't enter the gates of encounter. We believe so much in activities. Powerful men are not just given to activities. They are given to moments. Did you not see the man that was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years? You know he's a man of activity. Because even when Jesus came in the flesh, he couldn't discern him. He said, would you be made whole? He said, I've been here for 38 years. They didn't ask you for how long you have been here. Activities have distracted you. Would you be made whole? I've been here for 30. Who asked you how long you have been here? That's why every time the water is stirred, that's when he's distracted. And that you are there for 40 years will not create any change. There are locations of the spirit realm ready. When your kairos moment comes, will you know? Jesus said in Luke 19 44, he said there will be gnashing of teeth. He said the city will be besieged on every side. He said many will weep. Why? Because they know not the times of their visitation. When men are preparing for war, that's when some go to have pleasure. And he said, Woe unto you if your prince is a child and eat for pleasure and not for strength. It's not every night that men should sleep. There are certain nights that a body comes upon you. If you need to put your leg in water to pray till morning, put your leg in water. By all means, have that encounter. Every time there is an alteration in spiritual frequency, make sure you isolate the counsel of God that came with it. That's what will make your life relevant. You can be promoted in the spirit seven times in one year if you can maximize it. That's why you look at certain men. You say, ah, why is God favoring this person? God is not a respecter of person. The man just knows how to maximize spiritual moments. If God favors men, he would have been biased. But God is not biased. The man has seven encounters in one year. He entered all of them. You, you have 13 encounters. You entered one. How do you think you can be the same with that man? You may disciple him in Bible school. He can become your pastor. Bodies. The language of bodies. They are not tangible, but they are heavy. No man can deny it. So God himself will put it upon you. Even if you are sleeping, sometimes God wakes you up in the night and you don't know why you woke up. You try to play music to sleep. You can't sleep. Be wise. There's an angel locking by the corner. There's a message from heaven. There's a message when you find out that on unexplainable things begin to happen around your life. Shut down your natural elements because you need to heighten your spiritual propensity. Attendance to body. It's one of the ways of maximizing spiritual realities. But many don't know the language of bodies. They say, I, didn't, I don't know how I was feeling. You don't know how you were feeling. It's a language of the spirit. Find out what it means. Go on your knees. Take a fast. Quickly. Because a window has opened in the spirit. So 
sometimes the difference between life and death is a whisper you want to travel you are about boarding the plane and the body hit you ah oh, the way of spiritual men we are mad a body hits you and you step back i know i paid a hundred thousand for the flight but lord what are you saying what are you saying am i not supposed to climb the air this afternoon what are you saying and you check in your spirit and they say travel not don't go you turn back and you call the person i'm sorry i can't come i can't come i don't know what is happening but i've followed this language for many years and it never fails i can't come you are about entering a business transaction and the body hit you ah wait what are you saying i know in this business i should make 300 percent but there's a body if i don't service this body i take no step because I know the difference between life and death is my ability to interpret this body. If I can interpret this body, it doesn't matter how far my mates have gone. There is a technology in the spirit called the hand of God. When Elijah sends body, he knelt down there. And when the body was met, he said the hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariot of Ahab, even unto Israel. It doesn't matter who took off first. At the end of the day, we will get there. And some will go there by chariot. Some will go there by where wind. The man who goes by chariot can live first. But the man who travels with the wind, even if he moves at the 11th hour, he will still get there. He will get there. And so what he will do is that he will wait to understand the movements of the wind. That's why David never heard it to battle. He said, when you see the Mulberry tree move, I have gone ahead of you. The army can be at the backyard shouting. David will still be consulting with the Urim and the Tumim. They say you are left. Give me time. There's a language of the spirit I'm trying to decipher. It came as a body. It's an encoded language. Sometimes the word of your destiny, it comes in form of man, man, man. Take care of a sin. Take care of a sin. It's a language of angels. So you can't just know it with your mind. You need to go back to the corridor of the spirit where the language came from and find out what does this code mean. And you will go back. Makoria. I'm not 35 years and this is the only suture that came in, in 15 years I will still not rush if I sense a body I will interpret it because it's not who married first that makes him pack it's who marries according to the will of God and as you are praying after a while you will break into chants and you'll be chanting in your room and sometimes while you are here praying you find yourself running that running that you are running is not physical running you are covering mileage in the spirit you are covering dimension in the spirit and you will wake up all of a sudden those who started 20 years ago they will become your disciples and they say what happened while i was interpreting body i went ahead in the spirit instead of dealing with bodies we allow anxiety to take place no you can't be defeated in life just move with the holy ghost move with the holy ghost move with the holy ghost you will get there you will get there many destinies are being truncated because they didn't pay attention to bodies they didn't pay attention it doesn't matter if your friend is doing well he's on his own lane and his own economy is different thank god for his life but focus on yours stay where you are it may go 10 years ahead of you it's not a body just stay where you are Mile, ome koko ragagagata in the parade maybe your friend's ministry is in abuja but god wants you to affect the world a man who is sent to abuja will not move at the same time 
with the man who is sent to affect the world so even though your friend is making impact in abuja today your own catchment area is the glow that's why when lot looked quickly and through sodom he went to destruction abraham waited my my goal is not where there is green pasture i'm an inheritor of the whole world and when he waited even sodom became his possession lot was in sodom but lot didn't have power over sodom abraham never stepped to sodom but where he stood with god he inherited sodom and when god wanted to destroy sodom he said will i do a thing without telling my servant abraham and god came to abraham to seek permission to destroy sodom and when god was going to sodom abraham said wait lord wait wait i am not in sodom but i want to intercede for sodom what if you find 50 righteous men how come lot who was in sodom didn't have power to intercede for sodom because you don't have to be in sodom to win sodom Eleko. what if you find 40 righteous men what if you find 30 righteous men what if you find 20 the man had inherited sodom from better because he knew when Lot was rushing, Kai, according to permutation, Sodom has green pasture. Abraham was waiting for the Holy Ghost. And when God came, he said, lift up your eyes. Anything you see belongs to you. And can I shock you? Abraham didn't just inherit his generation. Even you and I, we are the seeds of Abraham. Body. The second law of encounter is the law of seeking a spirit will never reveal himself to you until you seek him with the whole of your heart and when a man is seeking with the whole of his heart there's a way he goes about it so the spirit knows you he knows the last time you wanted to marry you were talking on phone till 3 a.m and you had power over sleep so <laughs> Three a.m. You are still agile. Oh, and the lady say, "I want to sleep. I'm tired." We say, "Okay." In the next five minutes, five minutes will always be fifty minutes. Fifty minutes will be three hours. Now you want to see God? You say, "Lord, I seek you with all my heart." Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey. Ten minutes of sleep. You are joking. When you were looking for a contract, you could sit down with all the vice and you followed the four a.m. in the morning looking for god the spirit know how you seek things with all your heart so when you come to seek him the same tenacity and focus with which you used to seek that lady with which you used to seek that contract until you hit that quota in the spirit you will not get that spirit's attention that's why i said you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with the whole of your heart i know how you seek things with the whole of your heart when you wanted to impress that man if he says he's coming by 2 p.m., you start preparing from 8 a.m. You go and cut your nails, you do all the eyelashes, you put your foundation, you buy a new gown, you iron it, and then God tells you there's a meeting by 6, and you wait until 5.40. You now start running. Where's my clothes? Where's my... You don't know what you're doing. And then when you come to church, you now lift your hands, and you are crying, I need you. When he looks at you, you'll be laughing. When the man said he was coming, you prepared for eight hours. Now you want to come for service. You use five minutes and you run into service. You say, Jesus, you know I love you. Uh, uh. When you finish that biochemical reaction, clean your face and seek God. Hey! You that was looking for job, they told you that the venue of the interview is eight kilometers. You were there by 5.40 a.m. You traveled for 8 kilometers. You came before they opened the office. Now you say you are seeking God. And service will go for one hour before. You stroll in and say, Kai. Abuja, Abuja. I don't understand this city. I don't understand this city. But the city could not tell you when you were looking for a job. Now that you are seeking God, the city can tell you. When you become serious, you will find him. The Bible said, God hides himself in the deep darkness. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 21, he said, Moses stepped into the deep darkness where God was. There are men that have sought him 
in the sun and in the rain. They have sought him in the light and in the dark. So God can't hide himself from them anymore. When God finds such a man, he will invest himself to him as a token. That's why he told Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. There is a level you must find God to. As a testimony, that is your greatest motivation. It's your greatest desire. You must find God and your quest for him must surpass every other. Because you were looking for job. You went for 400 days fasting. You were looking for a husband. You went for prayer meetings for one full year. You did vigil. You didn't sleep once. Now that you are married, vigils have become for young, young people. When they say fast, you say, Kai, when you are fasting, please add wisdom because you can have ulcer. But you didn't think of ulcer when you were looking for job. We deceive ourselves. And we don't know that God is an immortal spirit. He knows your intention. He knows your thoughts. He knows your propensities. And when you channel them towards him, he knows. When it comes to work, you have time. But when it comes to God, you don't have time. You will never find him. 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 The law of seeking God is a law of hunger. You are never satisfied. I want more. I want more. You just come from a miracle service. Everybody is talking about the miracles. You go back home, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. You are never satisfied. As touching the receipt of God, you are never satisfied. You will chase him and keep seeking him until the day you leave this world. That's a man who is ready for encounter. And I tell you, when you manage these things well, a point will come, you will begin to live in the realm of encounters. Because Jesus, I told them in the morning, he wasn't having encounters anymore. He said, the son of man, which is in heaven, he lives there. He lives there. We want to change our world. It's no joke. The things happening in this country, it's not just because men are wicked. Men have encountered wicked spirits, strange demons. You see pregnant women being butchered. You think it's wickedness. There are princes of wickedness that have encountered men. Made people become psychopaths and sociopaths. They no longer have conscience. You want to contend with such men. You think it's English language. You coin English language because few people can clap for you. In the realm of the spirit, they don't hear English. They hear spirit and life. What is the weight of witness that you bring? You see young ladies that are fornicated and live as prostitutes for five years. You think English language will change them? Do you know the complex, dark, and gaudy thing that have been set in motion in political corridors? You think we will just stand and say, Nigeria will be great again, and Nigeria will become great. Do you know the spirit that have appeared to men in power? Do you know the covenant that men have entered with demons? When we come for encounter services like this, we have come to a place where we will never go back. We have made up our mind that until our God appears as a consuming fire, we will not go back because there's a generation that depends on our work with God. The reason we can serve God today is because men after us paid the price and we have no right to live here until we pay the price to secure a heritage for the next generation. Encounters are not a joke. They are tokens for spiritual men that pay prizes in the spirit. The laws of encounters. The laws of encounters. A day will come when politicians will be prophets. Senators will be apostles. Because they will not be told about God. They will know him personally. A day will come we are vigils. We no longer be for the poor members of the church. Even the wealthy will come for vigils and they will pray till morning because they have a relationship with God. A day will come 
when evangelism will no longer be for children even men of reputation will go to the street and win souls because they are servants of God because God is not raising superstars he's raising an army he's raising a warrior church and every one of us must come to the point of willingness to pay the price we are not preachers we are not singers we are witnesses to our generation and the reason we are witnesses is because we've had encounters that bring us to that point where we can demonstrate that which you say the third law of encounter is the law of standing in the presence he said to Elijah go and stand on the mountain and I will appear to you I will show myself before you when men don't build capacity in prayer they will never have encounters with God encounters are tokens for men who service the altar he said as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered your desire encounters your altars must come alive your altars must come alive nothing inspires me in scripture more than men that have power on the altar anybody can preach you can leave a bible school and become a great preacher you can be an orator and become a great preacher but it takes spiritual stamina to be a man of prayer because in the realm of God, power is not the ability to raise the dead because people don't die there in the realm of God, power is not the ability to heal the sick because people don't fall sick there in the realm of God, power is the ability to stand in the presence that's why I said the four beasts day and night forever and ever they stand before God and they have one testimony holy 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 is the Lord when God finds such men he gives them his presence as a token and that's why when Gabriel came to Zacharias he said I am Gabriel that standeth in the present because in the realm of God that is a scepter it's a place of power that a man can stand many times when you want to find out your capacity in the spirit it's not about preaching you can preach a series for four weeks but go and stand before God for 10 hours that's when you will know those who have capacity men who can travel because when you want to stand in the presence it's like ascending the mountains of God many times Moses will climb Sinai for 40 days he's climbing he will fall he will climb when you ascend Sinai Sinai is over 6,000 feet tall your legs will be blistered your hands will be blistered it takes hunger power and a state of not compromising to be able to stand in the presence and Moses will labor until he gets there and when he gets there God doesn't even show up he will still tarry for six days and when God descends on that mountain when God descends Moses doesn't return as a mortar he returns and as a mortar and he said even Moses wished not that his face began to shine he had paid too many prices for God not to allocate a measure of his presence to him as a weapon when Moses walks through a city his word is law with a staff he could part the Red Sea he had become a creature that could not be explained because of the texture of encounters that he paid the price for he went through prayer he tarried on the mountain until God appeared there are men who will hold on to him and say I will not let you go I will not his stamina in the spirit you want to find strong men they are not on the pulpit they are on the altar anybody can be on the pulpit but when you find men on the altar they are genuine men he said the priest must put wood on it every morning the fire on the altar must not be put out the reason our Christianity is weak and psychological is because we don't have men of prayer when men build capacity on the altar it will be commonplace when you come to such meetings you won't find sick people because when they stay in the presence for long their body the molecular structure of their body will be altered when they stay when you you can't talk to that kind of church because nobody will be naive when you are talking about the spirit realm they know because that's their everyday life you can't come and say an angel appear they live there and if you begin to lie they will look at you like this they will know you are a joker 
Because even the realm where they are sent to, you have not reached there. The church that God is raising is a praying church. Because very soon, our meetings will not be in auditoriums. It will be in the spirit. The witches have gone too far. Witches enter meetings through, through trees. They knew how to travel to the spirit realm. And today, we are still struggling, trying to get things done in the flesh. Meanwhile, our counterparts in the negative supernatural have gone far. When they go for their meetings, they don't carry cars there. They appear. They appear in the meeting. And it's not a testimony. If I appear on this altar, I assure you everybody will run. But in the demonic covenant, it's a normal thing. They know the spirit realm. Some people, they pray a whole year to encounter the devil. When you tell believers, let's go on 40 days fasting, they say, what? What do you mean? That's why we are weak. We have no power in the spirit. In the demonic realm, even the list in the demonic covenant comes to the meeting by teleporting. And we today, we are still quoting Philip, went to Samaria. Philip and the Holy Ghost took him to Asotot because of where we are in spiritual economy. We have not graduated because we don't have men to pay the price. We don't have men. You say you are a young man and you have no power in the spirit. What is your strength for? Is he a right unto you, young man? Because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you. You have overcome the evil one. Today, young men are still looking for direction. How can you be looking for direction? Your prime. This is your prime. How can you be seeking direction? You should have ascended the mountain and you know your future. That no false prophet can come to deceive you. When they talk to you, you look at them and say, Sir, I know where I'm going. I wasn't told by a man. I saw it in the mountain. I can tell you where I will be in the next 30 years. I saw it. That's the beauty of young men. They know where to deploy their strength. And when a young man comes out, the glory of a young man is the glory of the spirit that he carries. The power that he mirrors. When you want to find young men, you should find them on the altar. That's when there is a hope for a generation. Not young men that talk and back different kinds of haircut and they are followers on Facebook. We need men that can change things on the altar. Then you know that a generation has hope. When young men gather, it's not gossip. Unfortunately, our generation today, when young men gather, they are either talking football or they are gossiping. And they can talk about Chelsea and Man United for 10 hours. That's why we are oblivious in the spirit. We are oblivious of spiritual things. It's a shame that you find a thousand Christians and you can't find 20 of them that can walk in the spirit comfortably. It means our Christianity have not begun to touch matters of eternity. Our pursuits are wrong and our motivations are not serviced. In the day of the power of God, men will walk in the realm of encounters because prayer will become the breath that they breathe. That's why even in the, in the soccer way, Jeremiah was prophesying. He no longer lived by bread. There is another economy that powers him. There's another economy. The fourth law of encounter is the law of service. Samuel remained in the temple and God appeared to him. We don't want to serve in our generation. We want to appear on big boards and put our hands like this. <laughs> and the child, Samuel, served the Lord in the temple. It was by the altar in the temple that God called him. Samuel, 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 Samuel. They know the honor of service. Our generation can't serve nobody. They can't serve anywhere. Everybody wants to be the happening person. People don't happen. God reveals them. Forget this idea of seeing a man and running to remove his body and, and hold it like this. Ah, eh, eh. You have the Bible in your hand. You have a house and you have not held it. It's a man's body you came to remove. Eh, eh, I've been touched. I know demons can be cast out by such contact. But there is honor in service. He said the greatest of you all is the one who is the servant of all. I heard Benahim spoke. He said if his father and the Lord was still alive, he will still be serving him till today. Because men don't outgrow service. There are many things service represents in the spirit. 
Men don't have group service. You want to live in the realm of encounters? You must know how to service bodies. You want to live in the realm of encounters? You must know the way of service. You want to live in the realm of encounters? You must know how to see God with all your heart, without hypocrisy. You want to live in the realm of encounters? You must know the way of prayer. But just in case you don't pay that price, your life will not amount to much. Because even the scriptures have revealed to us that many generations came and went. There were only few men. Hope you know that there were many men that were not written about in scripture. It's only those who made the mark that were written about. That means in the chronicles of God, they don't write everybody. They don't talk about everybody. It's those who made the difference. Because the whole generation can be called the time of John. There may be a thousand prophets, but they didn't know them. They have titles. They don't have impact. So as far as the heavens are concerned, only John made a mark. So they said, everybody that is there, we will call you John until the time of John. May you not be captured in John. Have your identity in the spirit. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.